So typically demand for electricity goes up in the summer months as temperatures rise and that is beginning to happen, is expected to happen even more over the next few weeks. Now that increases the demand for coal. On the other side, we have geopolitical tensions which is resulting in the doubling of coal prices internationally uh, year on year. Uh, as a result of this, share of imported coal has halved to 4% of what India uh, really needs and domestic coal has come into higher demand. This is causing the fear, the possibility of another coal shock or a coal crisis. And we also now learn that Coal India is now prioritizing supply of coal to power plants. Let me first go across to my colleague uh, Prakash, who's joining us with more details on this story. Despite of all efforts, we are facing coal shortage situation again like in August last year, where there was power outage situation in many parts of the country. This year, power plants especially come from state governments are short of required coal stock level. And uh, you know, a sudden surge in summer power demand has uh, forced coal ministry to cut you know, coal supply uh, to non-power sectors. Uh, we have also been informed by our sources that the coal ministry has directed Coal India Limited to increase uh, coal supply to the uh, power sectors and give priority to power sectors over non-power sectors. Uh, it has also been uh, directed to put, you know, coal auction uh, meant for non-power sectors on hold for next uh, uh, three months. Uh, priority will be given to power sectors in allocation of railway rigs as well. Uh, you know, uh, new regulation uh, of uh, Indonesian coal imports and high prices in uh, global market has uh, put more pressure on domestic coal supplier. Uh, with some extent, it is going to help, you know, uh, thermal power plants to, to maintain required coal stock level. But at the other side, it is going to put more pressure on non-power sectors like aluminium, steel, cement, because uh, they are struggling to get required amount of coal uh, since last year. Harry Dhol, Director General of the IPPIA, is joining us on the discussion this evening. That's the Independent Power Producers of India Association. I'm speaking with uh, A.K. Jha, former Director of NTPC, and Debashish Mishra, partner at Deloitte India, is joining us on the show. Welcome to all of you and great to speak with you this evening. Mr. Dhol, let me begin with your take on the overall issue. I mean, our, our, my colleague has filed this report on how... Um, you know, sectors such as aluminum, steel, etc. may face a shortage. What is the situation on ground that you're observing? Well, the situation on the ground is uh, something which uh, unfortunately has got excavated because of the Ukraine situation, uh, which has shot up the coal prices. But otherwise, I think uh, the government had made elaborate plans to uh, get ready for the summer. In fact, uh, just some numbers were uh, in the case of New Delhi, uh, we are targeting to have a load of 8,000 megawatts this summer, which is the highest ever in the history of, uh, of New Delhi. Uh, so the point is they were all gearing up, uh, but unfortunately the prices have gone and derailed the whole process. That's the first point. The second point is that uh, there is this thought that maybe we can not be so dependent on coal in the coming days or the years, and we'll have more renewable energy. I don't think that's going to happen in the near future. The transition is going to be painful. Uh, coal prices are going up uh, astronomically, and that's something which has to be out of control. And you mentioned, your, your reporter, and you mentioned that uh, there is a situation where Coal India wants to direct uh, all the coal to the power plants, a sensible move, but it's going to be at a great cost because the aluminiums and the cement plants and the other guys are also uh, requiring energy and uh, they require the coal. And then let me just sort of end by saying that we have two, three challenges. Uh, we have challenges with regard to rake capacity, uh, moving coal is a big, big challenge. Uh, generating enough coal is, of course, the first challenge. And then getting imported coal, there's a third challenge. So um, I would just sort of restrict myself to say that the coal prices are going out of control. Uh, and uh, recently, the CERC, the Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, has just passed an order putting a cap on electricity prices. So, uh, and that is on a direction given by the Ministry of Power. So I think there's, the, putting all of this together, I would say the government is on top of it. Uh, it's a tough situation. Globally, it's so. Uh, two quick numbers before I conclude. France is paying 30 rupees a unit for electricity. Um, our prices on the power exchange are between 17, 18 rupees, and now it's being capped at 12 rupees. But let me also say at the end is that Mexico has all of a sudden opened up the thermal sector. 
and has given priority to coal. So basically, coal is the base on which your entire power sector rests. Renewables is the icing on the cake. Coal is also considered the dirty fuel. Uh, but uh, today, we're talking about uh, a fuel source that we're very dependent on and whether we're facing the same situation that we did last year. Mr. Jha, let me come to you on this point. Now, uh, of course, the Russia-Ukraine situation and the crisis there has worsen things. But the fact is we were in a bind even last year. Are there endemic issues that are recurring again and again? Uh, yes, as uh, Harry has also pointed out, there are basically the increased growth in the electricity generation or requirement in order to match the GDP growth requirement hmm. and the growth in the production of coal is not, is there is a mismatch there. And therefore, the stocks which are required to be maintained, in fact, the uh, regulation has reduced the requirement from the earlier uh, previous regulation. And in spite of that, what is required to be stocked and what is being stocked today, there is a huge difference, almost 50%. So uh, today, at least you have the hand to mouth, there is no scarcity as such that today I don't have coal. But yes, the amount of stock which is required to be maintained, that is not there. And when the summer peak is starting, then consumption is more, as you rightly said. And then immediately after the summer comes the monsoon, when the coal production goes down drastically. Last year also, when we talked about the shortage crisis in the month of August, that was because there was not enough coal mined or coal stocked in the power plants. Now, if the today also the situation in summer is that there is not enough coal stocked in the power plant, then what will be the situation in the monsoon? that we have to imagine. And second thing is that the quality of coal, the quality of coal uh, is becoming bad because of the shortage and the Gencos are not in a position to refuse the coal. Whatever we get, we have to take that coal. And this is also increasing the uh, time to unload the rake, the turnaround time of the rake. As such, there is a shortage of rake in the railway system to transport the entire amount of coal. So when there is a, because there are huge boulders and there is a turnaround time which is more, so the, uh, the, the amount of coal which can be transported from the mine to the power plant is also becoming less. And the Coal India on the other, height will say, other side will say that uh, we have enough uh, coal on the pithead, but the power companies are not picking up the coal. Why they are not picking up? Because the, uh, the coal quality is bad, the turn, uh, rate turnaround time is more, so all these things are there. So unless we know that, and on the other hand, we are talking about the dirty fuel. So if we have a dirty fuel, then we should use it minimum. So if we have a growth target of electricity generation at five or 6% per year, then we should see that how much of that is going to come from renewable and the balance will come from the coal. And then we have to have integrated plan that that coal will be produced from where, whether the CIL existing mines are okay, or the new auctions which have been done for commercial operation on revenue sharing basis, that is going to come. How soon they are going to come? We have issues of land acquisition. We have issues of environmental clearances. Whether these things can be expedited for the new mines, new mines to be opened by Coal India, as well as the new mines to be opened by the commercial operation. So unless there is a total integration on renewable versus the coal domestic versus the imported coal, and the fourth factor is gas, don't forget about the gas. Today, gas prices, the cost of energy is coming to around 25 rupees. So nobody is buying. The gas plants are under shutdown. The 100% imported coal plants are under shutdown. So if we have to meet the peaking demand of the renewable energy variation, mm -hmm. that also has to come from the thermal plants. So we need that additional coal also because the gas plants of 25 gigawatt capacity will not be working because they will generate at 9 rupees and no discom is willing to buy that. Yeah. They, they prefer to go for a shutdown, uh, load shedding, rather than buying at 9 rupees. So, so and the third thing, the last thing is that when you said about the industry concern versus the power. Hmm. Look, the power is a regulated sector. The As you know, CRC has fixed the tariff. We cannot go by, be, beyond that. The coal price is regulated by the government, although there is no regulator, but the government decides what is the coal price. But in case of industries, there is no such regulation. They are in the free market. So you have to see that the priority, that is why the government's insistence that the priority must be given to the power sector. And second thing is that 
power is the basic commodity if you compare to the aluminum or anything else it is the power which is required to produce first to meet everybody's need so in like you remember earlier days uh, in fact even now whatever little gas is coming the fertilizer industry got priority over the power sector so similar thing is happening now when it comes to coal shortage the power industry will so, get so, no, so clearly the, the prioritization is logical you're going to prioritize um, you know uh, electricity consumption etc rather than manufacturing sector so that's fine uh, i'm trying to understand if there are underlying issues that we've not tackled debashish let me come to you on this i mean we've been speaking for a while on how india has to yeah. uh, sort of prepare for an energy shock on all fronts uh, crude is has become expensive coal has become expensive gas has become expensive uh, how are we going to deal with this number 1 number 2 is it just the geopolitical situation which is the problem or have we not managed to plan for the increase in demand as our economy grows you know i think i think the genesis of the problem is more structural hmm. and you know uh, as uh, we have been talking about it last couple of years the power demand was stagnant in fact in fy 20 just the year before the pandemic year there was completely a flatish demand and if you look at the coal india's production only this year it increased to around 625 million ton but the previous 3 years it was stagnated at around 600 million ton so how did you manage because the power demand was not growing and whatever incremental demand was coming it was coming from renewable and it was getting solved so what happened is in fy 22 the year that just ended whatever on 31st march the power demand has gone up by around 8 8 1/2% 8 because the economy bounced back from the covid uh, you know in terms of that shock so as a result what is happening is the thermal coal uh, generation has gone up by 9% suddenly you know on a base you suddenly when you increase it by 9% the coal demand has gone up and in what happened was quite a lot of coal was getting produced till 2015 from captive sources the supreme honorable supreme court cancelled all the 218 mines in 2014 so that suddenly dried up that source and after that the uh, you know the coal uh, auction happened and uh, gradually the captive production is coming back probably this year we will end up having probably the year that went by around 100 million ton so overall this year if you look at it the demand thermal coal demand will be almost a billion ton so to the extent of around 200 million ton we are dependent on uh, imported coal that's where the geopolitics comes in hmm. so obviously if we india has massive amount of coal reserve unlike oil and gas we are we have abundance of coal but because of this structural issue and now only in last couple of years government has opened up for uh, you know the captive mining as per the supreme court guidelines and then the commercial mining obviously those sources have not opened up yet and uh, as uh, we have been talking about it the overall energy transition to cleaner sources will be a much longer process and in between this kind of shocks will keep coming if you don't plan it properly i was having a conversation yesterday with suman sena of renew power where uh, he was very clear that india's target of 175 gigawatts in 2022 in renewable energy is going to be missed uh yeah. we, we are going to miss it solar power is go- has become already more expensive to implement because of new duties which have come in so for now we are stuck with maximizing the quote and quote dirty fuel uh mr dhol let me come back to you on solutions you mentioned in your first response that the government is on top of it so what exactly does that mean what what are we going to do now so right now we're saying let's make sure electricity is running in households what next what's the next step but i think if you look at it from a the energy security point of view hmm. uh, you obviously have to come up with a strategy which makes you not dependent on international imports okay now if you don't want to be dependent on international imports you have two options you have coal which is indigenous and you call it a dirty fuel uh, and you have nuclear power um i think uh, the government should and perhaps is looking at increasing the capacity of nuclear power uh, and that has to be increased in geometrical progression because if you have nuclear energy uh, you are not really it's actually renewable if you ask me you don't have these hassles of uh, 
international coal prices affecting your domestic coal prices and the auction prices and so on and so forth. Uh, the second thing I think is there's a serious problem brewing, which uh, we guys are observing is thermal capacity is being discouraged. So no new thermal power plants are coming up. This is a very dangerous situation because our per capita consumption uh, per head is still lagging behind even countries like you know China, of course, uh, but even countries uh, which are similar, uh, we are way behind. And if we are really going to have uh, the kind of development and growth and, and, and be a phenomenal global power that we plan to be and are almost on the threshold, we need to have energy security. Uh, the last thing I think we need to look at is people must understand that when you say that you have 200 gigawatts or 175 gigawatts of renewable energy, uh, you need to keep two things very quickly in mind. The sun doesn't shine at night. It shines in the day. So that knocks off half your capacity. Uh, and so if you look at the wind and the solar situation, whatever be your installed capacity, you will get about 15, 20, 25% on a per annual, annual basis of the capacity. The rest of it is basically not available to you because it is intermittent power. Now be that as it may, thermal power plants have a capacity to supply you anywhere between 70, 80, 85, 90% of the installed capacity, which means for every six crores per megawatt or eight crores per megawatt I spend on, uh, on thermal versus a five, six crores on a renewable, I am only getting 20% of that power. So people have this notion that, you know, we've got 200 gigawatts of renewable and we've got 220, 250 gigawatts of thermal and we are sorted, we are not. That 200 gigawatts of thermal, uh, sorry, renewable, is 20% available to you, right? Now that is going to be a challenge because people need to be very clear about this. You will, for the next 10 to 20 years, still have old King Cole commanding the scene. Mm. You don't have an option. And I agree with Devashish and what Jasab said, you need to develop the coal mines. We went out very strongly as IPPI and pleaded with the court in 2014 that please don't scrap these mines Penalize them if you want because of some technical flaws or whatever it was, but don't scrap the mines. The government of the day at that point in time, these early days with the new government, they took a position that no, it doesn't really matter. And that's one of the reasons why, and Devashish pointed this out, a huge amount of availability of coal disappeared. Hmm. And so we've gone back maybe 10 years behind and uh, we're now restarting the whole process again. At an enormous cost, uh, at an enormous price the nation has paid, um, electricity prices have gone crazy um, and, and the consumer is paying those, those prices. So yeah. I think I think the point that Jhasa made, I'll just finish with that, the CERC has put a cap on a free market situation of the power exchanges. This is really worrying because either you decide you want to have free market or you decide to be completely regulated. You can't have both. That's how it is. Um, you know, the, the reality of the country is that a, a large number of Indian consumers and end consumers are not going to pay full price for electricity. It's, it's just not going to happen. Uh, in election after election, free electricity will be promised. It is perhaps required by many parts of the vulnerable population. So, so you know, we have to come to terms with that. But Mr. Jha... I, from, I, I won't say, before you go to Mr. Jha, let me just say one thing. Yeah. Why is it that we have to pay for diesel and petrol? And nobody gives it to us free. Why is it that in case of power we want it free? I don't understand this. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe you'll give an idea for the next diesel and petrol subsidy. <laughs> if if there is a change, it's probably going to be in the other direction. But, okay, Mr. Jha, coming to solutions, and, and uh, I, if I can request you to come to it a bit quickly, uh, because I'm running out of time. Uh, where from here? I mean, we don't want to import more coal right now, but is that something which we'll have to do? As I said, the solution lies in increasing the domestic coal production. Mm. And that can only happen if the new mines are opened in a speedier way. And there are two major bottlenecks on opening the new mines. One is the land acquisition, which the state governments need to expedite. If some tweaking in the act or rules have to be made, then that should be done immediately. And the second part is the environmental clearance, which take years, five years, six years to get it. So whether we need to tweak those uh, environmental clearance rules for the coal mines, looking in the larger interest of the company, country, and the Land Acquisition Act. 
unless these two things are done whatever auctions have been done for the commercial coal mines today the production for these will start not before 5 to 6 years of time from now the, looking at the present scenario so this is something which we need to do immediately if we have to, otherwise we will have to depend on imported coal imported coal will continue to be costly and then the people will have prefer the discoms will prefer the load shedding and the 24 by 7 power will remain a dream so what and the second thing which mr harry said very rightly that we need to add more thermal power in the system right now hmm. but we we don't have coal whether it makes sense to add more uh, thermal power stations so the, both the things have to be integrated as i said in the beginning that my renewable energy plan my rake procurement by railways my dedicated freight corridor readiness and the opening of new mines by both coal india and the commercial uh, uh, mines they all have to be in tandem in, in as as integrated plan for the next 5 years and 10 years right. and then we but you know you, you know what the reducing... sure so um, yeah. if, if, can i come to you very quickly devashish to just wrap up the the uh, concern here and perhaps the challenge is going to be i mean i'm hearing uh, the experts on this panel say increase the number of um, uh, thermal plants let's start producing more coal the trend the world over is going in the opposite direction we want to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels how do we put these two uh, you know concerns together so so turn it that is i think at uh, government level when we went ahead and committed the uh, uh, cop 26 yeah uh, net zero target by 2070 government has planned it out in terms of how things will work out so obviously we are planning 450 gigawatt of renewable capacity by 2030 and what is expected is that by 2025 26 the storage will come to a utility uh, you know where it is economically uh, viable to use it at the utility level and that's what will be possible to use uh, your uh, uh, you know solar and wind power with storage technologies where it can run on a dispatchable basis that is 24/7 so it will not be what uh, harry was mentioning about it only comes during the day that problem will be probably solved in the later part of uh, this decade where india has enormous potential for solar and wind and which will also take us away from fossil fuel but since today the power sector dependence on coal is around 70% what india has planned is that transition is going to be 2 to 3 decades not going to happen immediately so gradually that dependence will come down but during this transition such shocks will keep happening because we are running away from fossil fuel yet we are over dependent on it yeah. so that calibrated approach has to be there but these shocks will keep coming back to us once in a while well that's uh, that's a concern because uh, what's going to happen uh, geopolitically is completely uncertain cannot be predicted yeah. at this point uh, at the beginning of this year we were just coping with covid we weren't prepared for a Russia Ukraine conflict to that extent well on that note i want to thank all of you for joining us on the lead story this evening on the india development debate